Ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure you can appreciate the difficulty with which art conservators have telling the difference between a genuine Michelangelo and a forgery. <laughs> telling the difference between a constable landscape uh, and a fake. <laughs> Apologies. Uh, now, one of the key methods that art conservators use to differentiate between a uh, fake and a fortune is a method called polarised light microscopy, PLM for short. They take a sample of paint from a painting and put it under a microscope. Here's an example. They identify the visual characteristics of this pigment and try and work out which pigment it is. Now, up until now, They've been using books such as this, the Pigment Compendium, as the source of all knowledge, things pigment-related. And it's a fantastic resource, but there's a fundamental problem with it. And that is that this is a dictionary. It's indexed based on the pigment name. It's not a lookup table indexed by the characteristic. And that's where our programme comes in. So I'd like to read to you a, a short passage from the pigment compendium. <laughs> Imagine an art conservator looking down their microscope, seeing these characteristics and, and flicking through this book, trying to identify which pigment it is, versus our solution, which Andrew will um, show as we go along, so entering up the characteristics into our programme. In plain polarised light, cobalt tin oxide, cerulean blue, forms translucent turquoise blue grains with moderate relief and a refractive index greater than that of the medium. Now, even with only these three characteristics entered, we can see that cerulean blue appears at the top of our suggestions list. And hopefully this gives you a kind of feel as to the, the kind of difference that our programme can make in the lives of someone practising PLM. So how did we go about doing this? Well, on our front end, we used a language called ELM. It's a functional language, uh, but it can pass down to your sort of standard uh, HTML JavaScript. In the back end, we used a Python-based web framework called Django. Um, this provided us with a base to uh, work from um, and allowed us to abstract away from some of the low-level implementation details. And all this is supported by a MySQL database, and, and we put quite a lot of thought into how to formalise this database, how we could uh, extract useful information from the, the fairly loosely arranged data our client gave us and put it into a database which we could reliably and usefully query. One other thing to, to draw out is the, the possibility that the user might over-constrain their model. They might enter too many characteristics and no exact matches will be found. So we also implemented a close matching engine. Uh, we ignore progressively more and more of the user input. Uh, first one feature is ignored and then two. Um, and some close matches are presented. And the hope is that this will uh, sort of guide the user to, uh, to what they may be looking at, even if it doesn't give them a precise match. And quite a lot of these, these um, characteristics they're looking for are fairly ambiguous when they're looking down a microscope. And they're difficult to identify. So this is, um, this is a really valid system. So, is this solution going to change the world? Is it going to form the next spark in the digital revolution? Probably not. Will it affect the lives of the 200 plus respondents to a survey our client conducted? An unprecedented number of responses for the uh, fairly small PLM community. Will it help the students and the beginners new to the field? lowering the entry barriers and shallowing the learning curve? Will it help the professionals and the experts in the field reduce the faff of flicking through dictionaries? Our hope is that yes, yes it will do this. We're proud to have helped with that. Thank you. <laughs>